So what we want to do in this video is we want to determine how do we determine that upward buoyant force that we sp have spoken about. So remember, as you go deeper and deeper into the fluid, the pressure increases, right? So you get these larger increases, uh, or sorry, larger pressures as you go down. And it is this difference in pressure that causes an upward <clears throat> buoyant force. Okay. Now the question is, how do we calculate the magnitude of that upward buoyant force? So it's easy, for example, if you've got, say, a box and it's submerged in water or any fluid that you know the density of that fluid. And you're able to, you know what the pressure is here on the top. And you know what the pressure is on the bottom. And so, and we know the area on the bottom and we know the area, the surface area on the top. And you're able to say, well, F top is just equal to P top um, times area top. And F bottom is pressure bottom times the area at the bottom. Okay, so, and then we've got the force at the top, force at the bottom, and we 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 have a an, an F bottom and then going up, and then an F top that's pressing down, and we calculate the resultant net force. Easy. It's easy if you know what the surface area is uh, at the top and the bottom. But the question is, what about for an arbitrary, irregular shape. Because we want to be able to determine what this buoyant force is for any shape. Look at this funny shape. Or you had this funny shape that gets immersed in water. Or say only a portion of that shape, uh, of that object was immersed in water. How do you determine this upward buoyant force? Okay. Now, you guys need to stick with me here. Okay, so we know how to calculate it for a nice square box, for example. Okay, so what about an arbitrary shape? Okay, so we know that this is the important thing. I want you to, this to stick in your mind, is that for an object, the upward buoyant force is in dependent of what's inside what that box or that object is made of that upward buoyant force is independent of the density the material so whether this is um, a brick whether it is wood whether it is water whether it is whatever it is the this upward buoyant force doesn't depend on what the material is. It only depends on what? On the pressure difference between there and there. That is what the upward buoyant force depends on. Depends on the pressure difference. So it's independent of the material, right? The density of this material or whatever this material is, but it does depend on the pressure difference between there and there. Okay. Um, so, if we are to determine, so if we want to determine this, uh, this upward buoyant force, let's assume, let's assume that this inside here is just filled with water. Okay, so once once upon a time there was this object. We want to determine what this upward buoyant force is. So let's assume that this water uh, fills up this space. Because remember, guys, uh, when you immerse immerse an object in water like that, then the volume of that object um, displaces. Or well, that object displaces the same amount of water as that the volume of that object. So now let's just assume 
that instead of that object, say, steel or wood or whatever, we have water here. It's the same volume, the same volume as that. Well, we know that that upward buoyant force must be the same because the upward buoyant force is independent of whatever this material is. Okay? I hope that's clear. So we, we, we've still got that same upward buoyant force that was, was there. But now, we know what the downward gravitational force is. Because remember, the downward gravitational force does change. And the downward gravitational force is dependent on the material. Because Fg is mg. It's the mass. Right? And the mass is equal to density times volume. So the downward gravitational force, yes, is dependent on the material. So if we replace that material with water, now we know what that downward gravitational force is. It's equal to the mass of the water times gravity. And if this is water, then we know that we have a we our acceleration will be zero because this body of water the same volume of water is not accelerating so now we know that that buoyant force is equal right that that buoyant force that was independent of the material that buoyant force that was only dependent on the pressure difference in this specific case, the buoyant force is now equal to the mass of this volume of water multiplied by gravity. Okay? So this is how we've determined the buoyant force for an arbitrary shape. It is dependent, well, let's just go right down, an object submerged either fully or partially in a fluid, experiences an upward buoyant force that is equal in magnitude to the magnitude of the force of gravity exerted on the fluid, right? We had that Fg down, and we had the buoyant force up. So the buoyant force is equal to the uh, magnitude of the force pulling down the fluid that has been displaced by the object. Okay? Alright, let's, let's carry on in the next video and hopefully it will get clearer and clearer.